our God this morning and we're going to sing that song that says I give thanks to the Lord our God and King his love endures forever forever he is faithful forever he is strong forever he is with us everybody who's joining us on the Destiny broadcast today. We're so glad that you tuned in to watch the services here from Destiny. Why don't you drop us an email? Let us know what God's been speaking to you about. Let us know what's going on in your life. We'd love to be able to pray with you. It's great that you're watching us and we've had a fantastic time of worship of God here this morning. And now we're going to hear a great message from Pastor Ian Critchley on the Word. Read it, understand it, and use it. Let's welcome him as he comes. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 says this. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. How well are you eating the word of God? Is the question. In Matthew 24, verse 35, it says, Heaven and earth are going to pass away, but my word will never pass away. If something so important as the word of God, something so vital to life, but you're not accessing it, reading it, understanding it, or using it, then I'm going to suggest there's a change that's got to happen in our lives if we are really going to be people who are going to be strong in the Lord. Many people go to church, many people like to come to church because they like the feeling that it gives them. People come to church and they're down and so many people have said to me over the years, oh, I loved coming to church today. I came in feeling down. I'm going home feeling so much better. Well, I'm glad. I've been to some churches where I walked out feeling... I'm glad that you go home feeling better. We work hard, <laughs> pray hard, plan hard to make it feel better. But the key isn't just that you go home feeling better. The key responsibility for us in ministry here is to actually give you challenge and to give you insight and give you tools whereby you don't just come here to get that upper feeling but we give you something that is called discipleship 
that actually main, means that you in your life, in your daily life at home for yourself, you can actually become strong in the Lord. It, church is still going to be important. The ministry of pastors and elders and all that is still going to be important. But you don't have to wait till Sunday to go and get something. You will know how to go and get something for yourself. This book is referred to as being the Word of God. When you are referring to this in the particular New Testament, it's, it's referred to the, the written word is often used as being the, the logos. It's the Greek word logos. In John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, the logos. Who is the logos referring to? Is Jesus Christ. So say, he shares the same name as this being his word. But then there are time after time in the Bible where in the English translation it just talks about the Word of God and it just says the Word, but actually it isn't using the word Logos, it's using the word Rhema. When it says here in this verse that I read to you, man does not live by bread alone but by every word, the word there is not Logos, it is Rhema. What Rhema means is that when God has said something, that word written down could be like the logos but that when God takes that logos and chooses to send that word to you it becomes rhema it's like God said something but then he takes that word and he puts it in an envelope and it's addressed to Ian Critchley or your name and that word becomes personal to you becomes directed towards you becomes a word that is carrying with it faith for you becomes a word that is carrying direction to you becomes a word that is carrying encouragement to you becomes a word that is just going to turn you around and keep you on the right track that word then becomes in Bible terms a rhema word to you it's a living word just because you read the Bible doesn't mean that you heard the Word of God. You read the book, but it's only when the book starts to speak to you and the Holy Spirit takes it and starts to say something to you. I say something. You know, you can read the Bible and all it is a bunch of words, but then you can read the Bible when you're in tune with the Holy Spirit and it starts to say something to you. And you're sitting there and you go, I've read that verse 20 times, but now I read it and it said something to me. That's when you know that the rhema word of God suddenly actioned into you. In Luke chapter 5 and verse 5, it talks about Jesus having a discourse, if you remember, with the disciples, and they were fishing, and, and he said, cast your nets on the other side, and in Luke 5, verse 5, you find the disciples shouting back and said, hey, listen, we've been, who are you to tell us how to fish? But basically, at your word, we will let down the nets, at your rhema. It was the rhema of Jesus who said to the fishermen, I've got something to say into your situation. It's not going well for you right now, but if you listen to my word, my rhema, I can give you a word which will change your circumstances. And the disciples having a tough time not f catching any fish, the word changed it, and they put down the nets, and they got an incredible catch of fish. I believe that God has got rhema word to speak to some people here today. Hundreds of you all sat here and up in the galleries. You know, God knows every single one of you. He knows the circumstances of your life. He knows what you left at home. He knows what you're going to face tomorrow, be, be that in your family or in your work. He knows what you're facing with that appointment that is coming up with the doctors. He knows those inner fears. He knows those... The, the, those insecurities that you've got he knows the joys he knows the blessings he knows it all and God's got a word now we can live life without that word we can get up in the morning and say what do I think I should do today what rules what guidelines what you know I will take charge of me that's what people do all around the world and people are successful with that but why would we want to ever live our lives based on our own intellect on our own experience on our own limited view of things on our own way I mean let me tell you this we have no idea you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow 
You don't even have an idea of what's going to happen this afternoon. Except for the fact that Liverpool are going to win. You have no idea. Are they playing even today? I don't know. I know that Manchester won yesterday. I thought that might just get a few amens. We have no idea. You don't know what is ahead of you. So why would we think ourselves to be so smart that we can plan for our future, that we can make decisions in our future when we don't even understand what's going on in our future? Why would we be so silly to ignore the Word of God when God knows our future? Because He lives, we can face tomorrow. It's not just because He lives, but not only does He live, but He's made plans for tomorrow. He's made the plans for our tomorrow. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to give you hope and a future. And if God knows the plans, He can give me and you strategies so that we make choices in our lives that help us to fulfill the will of God in our lives. Many, many, many years ago now, I remember preaching a message in the early days of us calling ourselves the, 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 the name of Destiny Church. And I, I preached this message that's called Decisions Determine Destiny. The decisions you make today determine your destiny. The decision that I made to marry my bride last Monday, we, were, we celebrated 35 years of marriage. Easter Monday. We, we, 35 years. That decision determined our destiny. 35 years ago, we're still here loving one another and looking forward to all that God has still got for us in the days that are ahead. Decisions determine destiny. We meet people, sometimes they come through our office and they come in, in a counseling situation with us and they're, they're like, you know, their lives got beat up and they're facing this challenge and this challenge and this challenge and when we start to talk about it, we find out that back there somewhere, it was a, a, a seemingly insignificant little decision that somebody made back then. But that decision had a ramification here and a change there. And, and soon that little, that little seemingly insignificant decision back then has, has changed their life and not always for good. We need to make sure that we are hearing the Word of God. In John chapter 15, and verse 7 to 8, it says, If you abide in me, or if you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Now, what's the word word there? It's rhema again. It's, it's, the, it's the Greek rhema. If my words remain in you. See, I don't know about you, but I want to remain in Christ. I, I don't want to get chopped off. I don't want to get disconnected I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ today in my 60th year I'm still a follower of Jesus Christ in my 70th year 80th year should God give me those years I want to stay being a follower of Jesus Christ how am I going to be able to do that and not just a dogged follower like a little pilgrim but I actually want to be somebody that is fulfilling God's plan over my life don't you God's got a plan for you God's got a plan not just so that you can survive God's got a plan for you so you can prosper. God's not got a plan just so that you can just make it to heaven by the skin of your teeth. God's got a plan for you so that you can do something good. And that at the end of time when somebody looks back over your life, they'll say, wow, look at this because of what God did through them. Look at this, look at this, look at it. And you'll have affected lives, you'll have changed circumstances, you will have done something good. That's what God wants to do with us. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to learn this verse. We've got to remain or abide in Christ and let His words remain or abide in us. See, God's word abiding in us is... That's, that's a really deep thing. The reason that some people make choices and decisions in their lives that are not in keeping with God's word is because they don't know God's word. You know, there are people in relationships there are people with attitudes there are people doing things and making big decisions and all sorts of things they do it because they don't know that they shouldn't or they should you know, you know some, some people are sitting there and they're having a relationship and it's like oh marriage doesn't really matter well read the Bible it does matter People are saying, oh, well, it's all right for me to go and, you know, engage in pornography and all that sort of stuff. No, it's okay. Well, if you read the Bible, you would find out a rhema word that says, yes, it does matter. 
that actually we're supposed to keep our hearts and our minds and our thoughts pure and that we're not supposed to do things that generate lust with inside ourselves which will just put you on a that little decision to go and go that way if you don't check that and get that right according to the rhema word of God sometime down here will have its effect in your life and it will start to wreck you it's the same with lying people say oh well you know I can just tell a little white lie here there is no such thing as a white lie it's either truth or lie it's either yes as far as God is concerned or God looks at it and says uh uh because I know God is a God of all truth and the father of lies is the devil but if you don't know it it's the same thing like you're lying in your bed of sickness and you say oh I feel so sick there's no hope for me I'm finished well read the Bible there is hope for you because he is the Lord that heals you but if you're not reading it you don't know about it many years ago we were on holiday and we we lost some things and so some things were stolen from us and and it's like we came back and we said oh that's a real shame what, what a shame and then about two years later Rachel gets out the insurance policy and found out that we were covered for it we could have claimed so she made the phone call to one to claim and say, sorry you're out of date you weren't there on time you've only got a certain amount of time I mean you don't get what you don't know and we need to know the truth we need to know the promises of God you need to know that he's the Lord that heals you you need to know that he's the God that will provide for you you need to know that he'll protect you you need to know that he'll go before you you need to know that he'll be behind you you need to know that he'll never leave you and never forsake you you need to know the word it's the word see some people think about reading Bible reading oh that's boring I don't need to read the Bible you know I know a lot about the Bible well I know a lot about the Bible I'm not talking about knowing a lot about the Bible I'm talking about hearing his voice you see there's a difference between the word of God and the voice of God this is the word of God but it only becomes the voice of God when I hear that's why in the Bible the verse says let him who has ears to hear let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. So in a congregation like this, there are some people who are listening to my voice and it's like you are just listening to oratory. But there are some people here and maybe some people are watching us on the broadcast in various countries around the world and suddenly in the middle of listening to this, my voice, you're actually hearing the voice of God because you've got ears to hear. And that's the way that we should read the Bible, with ears to hear. That's the way that we should come to church, with ears to hear. That's why we should have a judgment in our life that says, Oh God, I want to make the choices and decisions in my life based on the Word of God. And we've just been dedicating child after child after child, dead baby dedications over the last few weeks. Uh, the Bible's got something to say about raising children. Do you know what it is? It says that when you walk down the streets, talk, talk to them about Jesus. It says when you pull up the chair to the table at home, you're having lunch, talk to them about Jesus. It says impress them on your children. The Bible says train a child in the way that it'll go, and when it's old, it won't depart from it. The Bible's got things to say about discipline. The Bible's got things to say about how a husband should look after his wife, how the wife should respond to her husband. The Bible's got things to say about how you handle money. If you don't know what the Bible says, how can we live in the good of it? But I want to live, and I know that you do, in the good of what the Bible says we can have. And it's not just because it's in here. We need to hear the rhema voice of God. <clears throat> you see, pass me these things up here. The British government, don't you just love them? Okay, that one went down really well. The British government has decided that we need five a day. Or actually, just recently, they decided we need seven a day, don't we? Or ten a day? Any more on seven, five? I don't know. We need to eat more fruit and veg. Is that right? So, 
I know a bunch of you. You look so good. You're obviously doing well on this. Let's have a real poll across here. Now, how many of you can genuinely say five portions of fruit and veg every day? You do it all day, every day. You really healthy eaters. One, two, you're not. Three, you are. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so 300 not. How many of you prefer chocolate? Okay. The problem of five day chocolates. For the sake of the broadcast, there is one member of our congregation who would like five a day chocolate. Okay. The problem of the broadcast is they don't hear all your responses unless you shout it out really loud, okay? Five a day. But dependent on what sort of person you are, I mean, that's a bush, isn't it? it it's a tree. I mean, what, what are you. Oh, and by the way, officially, I'm uh, highly allergic to, to this. Thank God. And I, I never liked it in the first place, and then I found out that I was highly allergic to it. And uh, I, need, I, I mustn't suck my fingers when I've touched this, or else I, I will be ill. So, what do we do? What we like is the things that are easy to access, don't we? How many of you like bananas? How many of you eat a banana regularly? See, hands up. Why? Because it's easy. You get it. You peel it back. You take off the little bits of... Oh, by the way, when I was in Africa, they used to say, oh, you British with your yellow, yellow bananas, the more brown dots on the outside, the better the taste. They're right. I mean, we eat this because it's easy, don't we? It's easy to peel. It's easy to get there. It's easy to eat. You can even eat it with your dentures. It's, it's very, very easy. We're like that with the Word of God. We want an easy fix. I had this honest conversation with somebody a while ago who said to me that the only bit of the Bible they read is the Psalms. I said, why is that? I said, it's because I understand them. It's, it's easy to read. Well, thank God for the Psalms. They're like bananas. It's easy access. You can get there. It's pretty easy. huh? Anybody hungry? Anybody else really like bananas? Okay. Can't really see anybody out there. There you go. You ready? Watch your heads. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, there's some other things, though. And some of you Yorkshire folk are going to say, what's that? And you're going to say, I don't like none of that foreign muck. But Graham, have you any idea what that is? An apple that's gone wrong. So here's the typical reader of the Bible that says, I'm not going to read this part of the Bible because I don't just recognize it. Well, this is a mango. And mangoes, well, in Africa, they're much better than this. This is an imported mango, but this is a mango. Graham, if I gave you that, would you know what to do with it? I don't want to pick on you. I know the answer to it is, is he'd wrap it up with his, with his vest. But anyhow... <laughs> Just because I don't recognize it, I will leave it to one side. Listen, don't leave whole chunks of the Bible to one side just because you don't recognize it. Just in your history, you might have never really delved into that bit of the Bible. Go for it all. It's, it's, it's a whole fruit bowl full of all sorts of goodness. Anybody like mangoes? I've got to be careful. I can't throw this one because if, if I miss, somebody's going to... Whoever gets out here first can have it. There's a, there's, there's, there's a mango. Hey. His, his name is Amika. He's a plumber. I mean, what do we do with this? I mean, if you don't know what to do with it, you know, you'd think like, no, I don't. 
you've got to know what to do with it. That's why you need some skills about learning to read the Bible. You know, if you're reading the book of Revelation, you need the skill to know it's a prophetic book. Don't, don't just get freaked out with, because you've got this beast with all these heads and all these arms and these legs. and all. It, It's prophetic. It's, just, it's the same with song of songs or psalms. You need to understand and have some skills. You know, and you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't take that to work in your sandwich box, would you? Without a, can you imagine you coming out tomorrow morning and pull it? You go to work, you know, and you pull this out your sandwich box and you... I mean, someone... <laughs> It needs to be chopped up into smaller places, you know, and it needs some mayonnaise on it, and then it tastes much better. Anybody like a cucumber? Okay, you're welcome. I can probably throw this one without knocking somebody out. They, oh, sorry. See, we like these as well, don't we? But only when somebody's sick and in hospital, we take... Why do we take them grapes? Yeah. Oh, stone. It, it's, it's sweet, isn't it? Oh, I love verses that are sweet, don't you? And God says to me, I'm your shepherd. You'll lack no good thing. You think, oh, I'll have another one of them. I really, I really like those verses. Really, really, really like those verses. Anybody like some grapes? Come on. Oh. Oh. Isn't this colorful? Do you know what this is, Graham? I'm picking on you, aren't I? Don't tell him. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we, we could go all the way through this. What about this one? Sweet potato. Now, that's something that's new in Britain, isn't it? When I was raised as a child, I'd never heard of a sweet potato. The idea of a sweet potato was a potato with sugar on it. But now, now you, you, you've got sweet potatoes. We have sweet potatoes at home. Really, right? There's a whole variety of stuff in here. I mean, look what my wife put in. Welsh leek. But what would you need to do with that before you ate it? Yeah. And because I haven't got any more time. It's got a little face on the front. Well, what am I, what am I supposed to do with this? You see, you found a few verses in the Bible that are a bit like this. You say, I don't get it. Maybe God even gave you a rhema that looked a bit like this, and you thought, I don't get it. It's a dry, dusty word. It's how in the world am I supposed to get anything out of that? There will be some times when God speaks something to you or you're reading the Bible that it won't be a banana moment, nor will it be a grape moment. But it's going to be a time when you're going to have to do some work. But don't abandon it, don't run away quick. Because if you will do the work, you'll get a reward. See? Because it's worth it because I know because I've done this before that if I hit this I'm going to put coconut milk all over the but I, I get a double reward because I get the flesh of beautiful coconut and beautiful healthy coconut milk that I could put on my skin to keep it looking as I'm not going to break it because actually I like coconut. I'm going to take this home and eat it. But there's verses, isn't there, that you've found as being as hard as and as unattractive as, but stay with it and say, speak, Lord, to me. Open your word to me. Give me an ability and give me a patience. Give me a tenacity to go to the Holy Spirit and say, I really want, to, I really want all the goodness that is out of your word so that I can benefit from it. And you might, it might be a tough nut to crack, but when you've cracked it, the Word of God will, will flow to you. So this is my bowl full of five a day. And I'm saying to you, anybody like a pear? Sorry, I've only got one. Again, okay. Watch it. Did we get there? Oh! Orange. 
this is going to be really dangerous. Oh. I tell you what, with the exception of the coconut, you are all very welcome to come and break fruit with me later. Feel free. We, sweet potato. I mean, look at this. Do you know what this is, Graham? This, this is... This is the opposite of a very large place. This is a squash. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't immediately think that that is sweet and beautiful, would you? But you wait till you get into it. And it's the same with the Bible. There are some things in the Word of God you wouldn't think that they would be sweet and beautiful. But go and get into it. Go and get into the Word of God. Go and get the Word of God into you. Abide. Because this is where I want to finish you know that verse I was talking about if you abide and remain in me and my words remain in you the second part of that verse in John 15 7 and 8 says this if 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 it says if it says then you'll be able to ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you why? because it's for my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourself to be my disciples if you want to see some prayers answered if you want to see some breakthroughs in your life, get into the Word. Eat it. Get hungry for it. And if some of them are a bit of a tough nut to crack, st- I'm not going to... St- st- stay with it until it breaks open, until it comes out, and then you get that beautiful flesh of the Word and of the milk of the Word. And you'll, you'll become strong. You can eat chocolate if you want. In this story, chocolate would be like eating soap on the telly. Chocolate would be just like just having fun. But actually, God wants us to be strong. He wants us to grow up. He wants us to know how to make the decisions in life. Because decisions determine destiny. Those decisions need to be based on an understanding of the Word of God. If God's got plans for you, you make sure the decisions you take are in line with His plans. Where I live, what I do, with whom I hang out, what my attitudes are, what I say, what I do, all needs to be disciplined, to be restrained, to actually do, to take me in the right direction of the destiny that God's got for me. If I don't, I'm off down there somewhere or off down here somewhere. And there's maybe a rhema word for somebody here that says, those decisions that you're making, make sure that they're in line with the word of God for you, with the plans of God for you. I believe that every one of you are here because of the divine plan of God over your life. I said over a couple earlier in the service, we're glad that you're here. I'm saying over all of you, we're glad that you're here. And you know, together, If we can only hear and understand and act on and use the Word of God, there is no limit as to what we can see as a result of what God's doing here in destiny. No limit. We'll see the day coming when we'll see breakthroughs of healings. We're grateful for four people who've given their lives to Jesus Christ in the last two weeks. But you know, they're going to come in dozens soon. You know, there's no limit. There's no limit. This breakthrough, this revival comes but that day doesn't come haphazardly or irresponsibly it comes because we purposefully had five a day and kept ourselves with the word of in fact there's a question in the Bible that says how, how am I going to keep myself pure by hiding your word in my heart that I might not sin against you let's abide in him, let him abide in us let his word abide in you and then go and ask some great big things from God only do what his word says you can do did you get something 